Hi all, here we have the pleasure of an interview with uh, Master Yap Boyong. We have already published on this channel another video where he shares his biography. We are going now to share his point of view uh, on martial arts with just a few questions. So are you ready Master Yap? Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, hi. So, the first question. Mm -hmm. uh, learning methods from the past, uh, from, uh, specifically from your past. How did you learn and how it has changed along the time? And finally, what kind of methodology you propose for the future? Okay, yeah. You can say I learned the traditional way, <clears throat> which is you learn by the form, you're supposed to practice many times, and there was uh, not much explanation. Okay, so this is a very traditional method in many types of martial art. But I think one thing that made us different from the other martial arts is we did a lot of pair exercise, two-man exercise, and that helped us to develop the finer details of the art for ourselves, you know. But we were not really taught formally what are the details and the application in the form. We found it up by ourselves through the two-man training. And also, if you train with a more senior uh, martial art brother, Si Hing, then he can show you things. You see. So it was more an uh, informal structure of training. Now, the bad thing about the traditional way is it takes a long time to develop the skills. And the success rate, the people who can get the skills, is a very low percentage. That's why you can see some very good masters, but very still few students who have even, you know, half the level of skill of the master because that was not transmitted or could not be transmitted by the traditional training method. Hence, <coughs> when I started training, uh, teaching, I did not want to repeat that process. That means that I don't want my students to take 30 years before they can get results because if I tell my student, I can kind of teach you, but it takes you 30 years before you can, you know, get to a high level. Most of the students will run away and they say, I got better things to do. So I try to, well, I <clears throat> ask myself, you say, the question, how do I do certain things? How do, how do my methods work? How do I do these things? So I come from an IT background, so I literally hack myself, okay? So after I hacked myself, I then I come up with the methods and you know, they made the teaching, the learning process, the teaching process much faster. I think since teaching with the new methods, since I think I started teaching in 2010, I believe I can shorten the learning process to one third. That means what takes 10 years can now reduce to three years. Still, three years is quite a long time, but I believe three years is about the right time for someone who's starting from zero or even have some other martial arts background to achieve a reasonably high standard in our art. And I call this method the roadmap. Okay. Thank you, Master Yap. We go with the second question. Question. So this question is chi, mm. something apparently so mysterious, and uh, we have spoken about this in the last days. This word creates a lot of confusion because it becomes synonymous of magic. So, what can you say about that? Okay, I think uh, chi is a Chinese word. I said the word it is, yeah, and it is part of Chinese philosophy and metaphysics and Chinese medicine. To us, qi is, you can say, life energy. That is the energy that gives us life. So in the human body, the qi, the balance of qi, let's say yeah, we talk about yin and yang, is the harmony and the balance of qi that gives a person good health. So that's why in traditional Chinese medicine, we don't talk so much about fixing the problem, but rather we talk about bringing balance to the body and I think the same applies to the mind as well right 
uh, having good mental health may not be directly related to chi, but it's about bringing balance to the mind. Now, having said that, in terms of Chinese metaphysics, where the central concept was about man, heaven, and earth, qi is the common element that connects the three areas. You know? So we have earth qi, or, yeah, which is, so hence uh, waters, mountain, rivers, are all have qi, although they are not life object, they are you know, inanimate object. So, the art, you know, the discipline that deals with the Earth's Qi is called Feng Shui. Then we have Human Qi, right? That is the Qi that keeps us healthy, that also gives us the power for martial arts, right? So, the discipline for training that is, of course, Kung Fu, Qi Kong, or Ni Kong, right? And then you have Heavenly Qi, which is, you can think of it as spiritual power. And that comes from the discipline and training of, you know, meditation, uh, mantras, and so on. So you can see, qi is not magic, but in our metaphysics, is the common element that links earth, man, and heaven. So to us, if you look at it, qi has really got nothing to do with magic, but it is part of nature, part of what we are as a human being, part of what the earth is and also what makes up the heavens. So Qi is a form of energy, you can think of it that, think of it that way, that we can, if we train for it, we know how to apply and make use of it for our benefit. Thank you. So we go to the next question, which is uh, motivation. Mm -hmm. uh, so, which is or should be the motivation and the sense of practicing traditional martial arts for the young generations, be it in the West or in the East, since we are not in a warfare, warfare world? Okay. Normally, traditional martial arts are nowadays promoted as fitness, so relating to body shape, which is the main point, or self-defense combat sport, or spiritual path and so many times groups are like sex where also many times is about a cult of the teacher based on a new age poor spirituality so uh, what you can say about motivation well that's a big question <laughs> okay i think i will start by saying what is my motivation i have asked myself these questions you know since I started martial arts when I was nine years old, now I'm 67, so there's many years. So I ask myself, what keep me interested in this? Yeah, because throughout these years, I've seen many of my seeing, they have left. Some of them have come back, you know, and some of them have come back and left again and come back. But I stayed, you know, I stayed through all these years. So I ask myself this question. Well, to answer it, first, definitely is health. I think I definitely enjoy or get the benefits from training you know, of health from training the martial arts. I'm pretty healthy. I have not seen a doctor for quite a few months, you know. And since I've been training martial arts, I hardly get sick. Okay, I have gone into the hospital before. As once was because of accident, and another time was because of a hernia. But other than that, no serious thing. I'm not on any medication, I don't have diabetes, I don't have high blood pressure, and so on. So I think I definitely benefited from the health aspect of it. Second part of it, well, as a young man, I like the fighting part, the combat. But later I realized, well, fighting is not the way to, you know, to go through life. If you try to fight everything, you either run out of energy or you find something that is bigger than you that you cannot fight. So, but what I feel is self-defense is still important. Not because we want to fight, but because there will be a need where we need to defend ourselves or our loved ones. A good example I can think of is, let's say I'm walking down the street with my wife or my daughter or something, and someone attacks me. If I don't have martial arts skill, right, I will be helpless and I think I will feel very bad and have a lot of regret for not being able to do something during that, you know, that incident. 
but if I have martial arts skills, at least I can do something. So I think the, the martial arts, the self-defense part, and I believe that what comes with it is also confidence. Knowing martial arts, knowing the ability that, you know, with the ability you can defend yourself, gives you a confidence and a self-esteem, you know, in life. I think that is the second part. But the third part for me, which is always more very fascinating, is what I call the art part of martial art. You know, because martial art is like any art, whether you do painting or a flower arrangement or something, you get joy out of doing it, right? You get to express yourself when you do perform, you know, or practice the art like music, right? You express yourself. So to me, martial arts is an art, okay? Where Number one, I can express myself, I find joy and pleasure in doing it. But also, there is the cultural part, the historical part, which I keep you know, discovering and researching. And it's very fascinating to know about the history of the art you know, and, and all the stories that go with it. And also, our art is so deep that I never stop learning. You know? Whenever I practice a form, I would discover something new and say, ah, if you put your wrist this way or this way, it makes a difference, you know. I think some of you have seen that, right, in the way I teach. There's a lot of richness in the art itself. So it's these three things that keep me going, the health, the self-defense part of it, as well as the art part of it. Now, having said that, what would or help to motivate the younger people? Well. I think most younger people will not look at it from the art, I mean the health respect, because most young people are healthy. But then, that is always not the case nowadays. You've got young people with diabetes, right? Young people who are overweight, even young people with high blood pressure. So I think there is a necessity for the health part now in our modern times, right? We are talking of, you know, I mean you see teenagers, you know, with these problems. But I think the other part is, <coughs> for me also, is the martial arts allow us to discover our own body. Like, for example, the use of strings, you know? When I show the use of strings, a lot of people are fascinated. Hey, how come there's this thing in my body? How come I can do this? I can generate energy, I can stand more stably, right? So it's about discovering your own body and using your body more efficiently. And also in doing so, you save a lot of energy. So I think energy, the energy part is also a big aspect of it because a lot of people after a hard day's work or even as a student, you know, a full day of study, end of the day, you feel retired. A lot of people run out of energy by the end of the day. I think with the, especially the martial art, especially in Neiko, you regain this energy. And with this energy, I think you can lead a more productive, a more enjoyable, you know, a more joyful life rather than end of the day, oh, I'm too tired to do anything and you just sit down and watch the TV, right? Yeah, so I think these are some of the aspects, knowing, for the younger people, knowing your body better and therefore that contributes to health and also being able to have more energy, yeah. And I think that's the advantage of the chi aspect of internal training, whereas physical training, you still tired, get tired at the end of the day. With Qi, you're, you're, you're still energetic. That's what my personal belief is. Yeah. Okay, uh, we go to the next question. Uh, probably you already uh, answered part of it, but uh, following from, from the previous one, which is the, the role of traditional arts in modern society? If you can uh, elaborate in terms more of society, what could you add uh, about it? I think besides the physical and the health aspects of the martial arts, I think one is more, you can say, uh, behavioral or maybe certain qualities. Uh, you can say things like, you know, what shall I say? Uh, these are qualities of the mind rather than qualities of the body, I think. And I think in modern society that is more and more needed because there's a lot of chaos and so on, you see. So I refer to this back to if 
Okay, there are eight characters, Chinese characters, that were written on top of Shaolin Temple when you enter Shaolin Temple in the old days. Okay, I can't remember exactly all the eight characters, but they represent the sort of qualities that make for what I think we can call a good human being. All right. First thing is respect and honor. Okay, I think respect and honor is missing in our modern society. You can see, you know, there's a lack of respect for authority, a lack of respect for your elders, you know. A lot of this is missing. That leads to a lot of, you can say, you know, behaviors that are not, not acceptable, right? I think the other quality is responsibility. You know, people taking responsibility for our, our actions. A lot of people do something but they are not responsible for it. They don't take responsibility for it, right? So that is also another thing. Then the other third of this quality is what we call integrity. Integrity is more than honesty, right? Integrity means if I give, say something, I commit to it, right? Or I commit to something, I make sure I carry out with it. Don't say, oh, Pascali, I do this for you, but I never do it, you know? So integrity is also that. The other thing I feel is important as part of this, one of these eight Shaolin qualities, is courage, right? And courage doesn't mean just as a warrior, I go out there and fight. Courage also applies to, let's say, a doctor working in Africa, trying to rescue lives in very bad condition, right? A scientist who is doing groundbreaking research that may be criticized by his peers, See, all this is examples of courage, isn't it? Courage doesn't mean just physical courage. Courage also means mental strength, you know, the ability to push forward where no one else wants to or dare to, right? So these are some of the qualities, isn't it? right, that, that are part of the Shaolin, uh, you know, virtues, which I think are very important and helps to build society, isn't it? And then the other one I remember is perseverance. Perseverance means more than just hard work. Yeah? Perseverance means when everybody else give up, you continue. Right? That is perseverance. So you can see I mentioned about five qualities, right? And all these qualities will be very useful, right? If the members of society have these qualities, I think the world will be a much better place. Thank you. Uh, the next question: uh, Are there uh, are there out uh, other systems which make use of methodology similar to strings? And uh, if yes, which ones? Well, strings is something I sort of invented, but I cannot claim to be the original inventor. The concept of fascia has been there. I was told about it. It will you know in the Shaolin system, right? And I remember the words of our grandmaster, he says, the thing comes from the fascia and the tendons. But that's all he said. He didn't say more than that. <laughs> and also I remember learning from my teachers, you know, within our school. They also say, oh, you learn to connect your hand to your feet. You learn to connect your hand to your spine, you know. So, but again, this was never explained, is it? They could demonstrate it, you see, now when you connect your hand to your feet or your spine, you can generate power, boom, and I bounce, right? But they can't explain it. They say, oh, all I did was connect here to here or whatever. So that led me to try and find out what do you mean by all this connection? What are these lines, you know, they are talking about? And what gave me a lot of inspiration was when I discovered the works of Tom Myers and Anatomy Trains. And in that work, which is done within the last maybe 20, 30 years, relatively modern, Tom Myers illustrated the chain of fascia. That's why you call it trains, you know? Like you connect one train, yeah, one part of the train to another. So how the di different parts of the body is connected so that you can transmit force, you see? And he map out these lines in the body. They are not exactly the same from what I know, what I was taught, but there was very close similarity. So it's from that, knowing the old knowledge and the new knowledge, then I began to formulate the theory of strings and then from there develop a methodology for the training 
and also how to develop power and you know how to transmit uh, energy. And the energy is not just qi but zing yi qi, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yes, thank you. Very clear. Uh, last question. So, which should be the moral and technical points of strength and virtues for the ideal martial artist, be it master or student? I think uh, some of these uh, virtues I mentioned earlier, right? And these are the eight Shaolin virtues. I will try and find out exactly what it is and perhaps maybe talk more about it later. But I think these are equally valuable for you know any martial artist. Like. I think respect is definitely one of them. Like, right? Learning to respect not only your own peers and your master, but also to respect other martial artists. You know, uh, I may be from a different school from your school, but I still respect you right? as a martial artist and respect your school. Really. So it's not a better about who is better or who is poorer, right? Or, or not as strong. No, it's about who follows the martial, uh, what shall I say, ethics, right? Uh, they call it wuta, right? The martial ethics. And uh, some of these qualities, uh, as I explained earlier, you know, in the Shaolin Eight characters, you see, part of the martial ethics. So I think, uh, yeah, respect and honor is definitely one of them. And also for me personally, what I learned at a very early age is also humility. Yeah, humility is a very important quality, you know, to be humble. Because I found out at an early age, as I improved, I got better. But you soon find out that there's no matter how good you are, there's always someone better than you. You know. So you learn to be humble. And I think humility is also a good quality because if I'm already master or grandmaster, how can I learn from anyone, right? I'm already get grandmaster. That means your progress is already stuck there, you know. But I consider myself still a student, right? So as a student, I don't mind learning from anyone, right? So I think that quality of humility is important. Now, many people out there call themselves master this, master that. Some people call themselves grandmaster. But what they have done is essentially shut the door to, to learning really. because when you're master you're supposed to be know everything right so how can you learn mm -hmm. your cup is already full as they say so I think that is another very useful quality as a martial artist to be humble humble and respectful the other quality of course is perseverance and hard work right no matter how good you are if you don't train you don't practice, your peers will soon overtake you. You may be up here, but this guy trained harder than you. You go and you go through it and you go like that. So training is another aspect. And I think another quality is very important is openness, right? To be open to other people's ideas, not to say, oh, mine's the best. You are all wrong. Then then the learning can never happen, you see. But if you respect and are open to the other person, you say, hey, can we try, can we touch hands? And maybe, you know, both sides can learn something. Really. So openness is also, I think, an important quality. Right? I think, yeah, that's what I think, yeah, I have to say. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, sharing your point of view. Uh, so the interview is over. And uh, for the guys out there, I hope you can enjoy and go enjoy the content. And uh, bye, see you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thanks for the opportunity to talk about this. Thank you. Thank you.